Hello, this is Byron Shirley from Denison Yachting. We're in Lake Union in Seattle, and today I'm going to be showing you the Swift Trawler 50 and showing you why it's the best liveaboard in the Swift Trawler range. On today's sea trial, I was once again reminded why the Swift Trawler 50 is such an outstanding vessel. At low speeds and in tight areas, this boat is incredibly maneuverable, and when you get out and run at high speeds, the bow has low rise and precise handling. It is incredibly easy and fun to drive. This boat in particular goes up to 18 knots and it makes a whole difference in terms of running the boat. You can still drop it down to seven and a half knots and get very long range with it, but you've got the capacity to go fast if you want to get out of bad weather quicker. The other facet that makes this boat really useful is that you can easily run it with a couple. For example, you have the joystick docking maneuvering. There's also full walk around access with high railing around the boat, so you can safely walk around even when you're at sea. And finally, you have a really good helm station that has good visibility uh, with straight up and down windows so you don't have any glare and you have really good visibility all the way around the boat. First introduced in 2017, the Swift Trawler 50 has benefited from years of Swift Trawler design experience. And now it's really also changed the way people see trawlers into uh, a boat that can be faster, that can be uh, very practical and offer a 50-foot boat with the accoutrements, the layout of a 60-foot boat. We're going to start today's walkthrough up on the flybridge, where Benito redesigned the space. On previous generation of this Swift Trawler 50, you had a tender on the flybridge, but Benito redesigned that to have the tender off the back of the boat, accessible with a drop-down swim platform to make it very easy to launch the tender. Now that you have this open space, you can configure it to however you'd like. For example, you can put sunbathing chairs, you can put deck chairs, or even put a crane and maybe put kayaks up on the flybridge. There's also a dedicated cooking area with an electric barbecue, a sink, and a mini fridge. Directly above the barbecue area, you've got the fiberglass arch, which houses the speakers, lighting, plenty of other space for extra equipment. Let's look at the forward part of the flybridge, which features seating on port and starboard. The port side of the seating has an L-shaped settee and an extendable table that can reach over to the starboard side. The starboard side of the seating has a long bench area. One of the nice features of the starboard side seating is the dumbwaiter that's accessed below the cushions. The nice thing about this dumbwaiter feature is that it allows you to pass food and drink from the galley up to the flybridge. The upper helm has been reconfigured since Benito launched this boat to be much more ergonomic. The primary feature of this redesigned space is the 9 or 12 inch Raymarine screens. From here our next stop is going to be the swim platform. The drop down swim platform features tender chocks so that you can put about a 9.5 foot tender. The lazarette runs the full beam of the boat and has shelving, plenty of open space and also serves as the service axis for the pod drives and other equipment. There are three convenient access points to the lazarette. The first from the swim platform door, the second in a large overhead hatch, and the third is a small opening hatch on top of the storage, perfect for lines and fenders. Optionally, you can order a Swift Trawler 50 with the lazarette converted to a crew cabin complete with berth, toilet, and storage. Our next stop is up just a few steps, which is the cockpit. This is an inviting space. It is covered by the flybridge overhang and thus can be fully enclosed. Integrated into the flybridge overhang are exterior speakers and LED lighting and a grab rail. A unique thing you can do with this space is to pull out the salon table for alfresco dining around the L-shaped settee. Now let's turn our attention to the starboard side where we first see the docking station. The joystick allows you to control both engines together at once and there's a separate bow thruster control. Just inboard of this are teak steps that lead up to the flybridge, which we've already visited. One thing you may have noticed about the flybridge is that it has an asymmetrical side deck. That is because it has an overhang on the starboard side for the gangway. 
As I make my way forward, notice how the starboard side gangway is wider. The boat is best designed and used when docking on the starboard side. Our next stop is the foredeck, where you have a sun pad that can be converted into a settee. Forward of the sun pad is the ground tackle. There's two lockers, one side is for the anchor locker and the other side is for throwing lines and fenders. There's also a washdown station. As far as the ground tackle, there is a Lumar windlass and a Delta plow anchor. On today's sea trial on Lake Washington, you really notice how the semi-displacement hull with the plumb bow cuts through the waves. It is a ship designed to be versatile. At seven and a half knots, this boat gets one nautical mile per gallon for a 540 nautical mile range. However, it can also run at plating speeds of 15 to 17 knots and still get 280 nautical miles. She reaches these speeds with a pair of Volvo Penta IPS 600s with pod drive technology. The pod drives are more efficient than drive shafts and have the exhaust running through them so there's no smoke off the back of the boat. You can find the engines in the engine room along with the 13.5 kVA Cummins Onan generator, the charger inverter and the air conditioning units. There's space for more equipment to be added like a water maker. There's even a FLIR infrared camera that you can check from either helm. Having covered the exterior and the mechanical portion of the boat, let's now cover the interior starting with the salon. To port is a cabinet that hides an ice maker, a large TV that pops up, and a bar. Above it is a large window that can manually open. Now facing the starboard side, there's a U-shaped settee. It's the perfect space for relaxing inside with plush leather seating. The settee converts into a bed easily, and there are curtains for privacy, giving you another bed for two. Forward of the salon, two steps up, is the galley, which offers plenty of nice features and a great use of space. There's an optional three-burner induction cooktop and a propane oven. Outboard, below a large window, there's a double stainless sink, and there's plenty of cabinets and drawers at eye level and below the countertop. To me, the best feature is the dumbwaiter access to send food and drinks to the flybridge. Lastly, the garbage locker can be accessed from the gangway outside. To port is a large counter and there is a microwave and storage at eye level. And finally, under the counter, there's drawer fridges and freezers and an extra standing fridge. Moving forward, there's a dinette to port for two people to have breakfast on. And the table can be dropped down to make the dinette into a couch or a sea berth. Up ahead on the starboard side is the steering station which is a convenient space designed to make operating the boat easy. It's far forward of the boat so that you have great visibility. There are large vertical windows that minimize glare and allow you to really enjoy the views. The bench seating can easily sit two or more and everything is at reach of the helmsperson. The two optional 12-inch Raymarine chart plotters are packed with features like radar, depth sounder, sound system controls, and cameras, as well as infrared FLIR camera that I mentioned earlier in the engine room. Behind the helm station is the electrical cabinet. You can access the remote battery switches, check tankage, start the inverter and find breakers. Finally, on the Schieber panel, you can check the battery and water levels and switch from shore power to generator. Down a set of steps and forward, the VIP is one of the best guest cabins you will find for a boat this size. It is flooded with natural light and is elegantly appointed in mahogany finish with touches of leather. The island bed is roughly queen-sized and is low and easy to get in and out of. There are hanging lockers and shelves on both sides. Next to the VIP and further aft is the day head, which has a separate shower stall. The portside bunk bed cabin is a nice space for the kids and features more than enough storage. Finally, all the way aft is a full beam master cabin, which has large windows that illuminate a centerline queen berth. There are his and hers shelving and hanging lockers to either side and to port is a desk that doubles as a dressing station. 
Surprisingly, there is a separate head and shower to port and starboard, each with their own vanity. If you have any questions about the boat or you'd like to see it in person, you can reach out to me, Byron Shirley. I'd love to help you out.